There are 18 cards in Magic that can make your opponent directly lose the game, and today we're going to rank them all from hardest to easiest. So you might remember a few months ago, we did a video ranking all the win the game cards in Magic, and today's video is kind of a follow up to that video. In a 1v1 game of Magic, making your opponent lose the game is actually exactly the same as you winning the game. Before we get to the list, I should say that there's technically 72 cards in Magic that have the text lose the game, although most of these cards are designed to kill you rather than your opponent. Technically, you can sometimes use these cards to make your opponent die like you can cast a summoning pact with a high mind on the battlefield and make your opponent copy it or you can give your opponent a demonic pact with a harmless offering but since the primary purpose of these cards is to punish you and kill you if you're too greedy we're not going to include them on our list today anyway let's rank all the lose the game cards in magic before we do a quick reminder if you need some lose the game cards you can snag them from our sponsor card kingdom over at cardkingdom.com slash mtg goldfish Number 18, the Deck of Many Things. Let me start by saying that the Deck of Many Things is one of my favorite cards, and I jam it into a lot of commander decks for value as a way to recur things from the graveyard or draw cards, but actually making your opponent lose the game with the Deck of Many Things is almost impossible. First, you need to get Deck of Many Things on the battlefield, and then you need to roll a 20, but since you subtract the number of cards in your hand from your roll, you actually need to be empty-handed to have any chance of rolling a 20 at all let's say you do all this you get empty-handed you roll a 20 you don't actually just make your opponent lose the game instead you reanimate a creature and then once that creature dies its owner loses the game so this means you also need your opponent to have a creature in their graveyard after you get empty-handed and roll a natural 20 and then even if you do all this you still need a way to kill the creature that's reanimated which probably doesn't sound too hard but remember you're empty-handed Handed, so it's not like you just have a removal spell hanging out in hand. If we were ranking cards by their overall playability, the deck of many things would rank at least a little bit higher on our list because I do like it as a value engine, but we're ranking cards based on how easy it is to make your opponent lose the game with the card, and the deck of many things just requires so many steps and so much to go right that I've still never actually seen someone lose the game to it, at least minus an infinite dice rolling combo with Paradox Engine, but you don't get any points for going infinite infinite with paradox engine everything goes infinite with paradox engine number 17 Vraska scheming gorgon next up we have the planeswalker deck planeswalker Vraska scheming gorgon if you don't remember planeswalker decks they were these new player focused products notorious for having hilariously overcosted and underpowered planeswalkers Vraska can technically make a player lose the game you just need to play a six mana planeswalker plus to it three times to get to more than 10 loyalty, ultimate it, and then getting combat damage with a creature that you have on the battlefield, which will one-shot kill whoever it hits. If this sounds like a lot of effort, it is, especially since Faraska's plus two doesn't do much, just giving your creatures plus one plus zero until end of turn, making Faraska one of the hardest ways to make an opponent directly lose a game in Magic. Number 16, Aintmasis All-Seeing. Let me get this right. To make someone lose the game with eight misses, I need to play a six drop, wait for it to lose summoning sickness, getting damage with it, and then have not just six cards in hand, but six different mana values of cards in hand. Yeah, that's not happening. There are simply too many hoops to make eight misses work. Number 15, Hidesugu Consumes All. Hidesugu Consumes All is pretty weird. It's one of the most playable cards on our list today, showing up all the way back to modern and legacy, but it's also one of the hardest ways to make your opponent lose the game, which keeps it near the bottom of our list. The front side of the saga is powerful, especially in older formats like modern, where it can wipe away a board of small permanents and tokens and hate on the graveyard, but actually making your opponent lose the game with the backside is pretty tough. Not only do you need it to survive until the saga flips into Vessel of the All consuming, but then you need to deal 10 damage with the 3-3 Trampler. Sure, it can grow with counters every time it deals combat damage, but if you actually get in enough attacks to grow it to 10 power, your opponent's very likely already dead. There's probably some world where you flip it and use a bunch of pump spells to get it up to 10 power and immediately make your opponent die, like some sort of 
of super janky weird infect deck, but if that's your plan, you might as well just cut out the middleman and play an actual infect creature for the one shot kill. Number 14, Vraska the Unseen. Vraska the Unseen is an interesting card. A decade ago, it saw quite a bit of play in Standard, mostly as an expensive removal spell with upside, but it did occasionally make opponents lose the game. To actually make someone lose with Vraska, you need to reach its ultimate and use it to make three 1 1 assassins and then get in combat damage with one of them. While this isn't exactly easy to pull off in a controlling deck with a bunch of removal, it's not impossible. You just kill all your opponent's stuff and eventually ultimate your planeswalker on an empty board and then assassinate your opponent with a single attack. Perhaps the funniest part of Vraska is how the ultimate sort of accidentally scales for commander. Three assassins in theory means you can send one at each opponent and make all of your opponents lose the game in one attack. And this happened even though Vraska was printed way back in Return to Ravnica, before wizards really started designing every card for commander, which means this is probably more of a happy accident than an intentional choice. Number 13, Triskaidekaphobia. The good news for Triskaidekaphobia, which makes players with exactly 13 life lose the game on your upkeep, is that it easily combos with Tree of Perdition, which can tap itself to set your opponent's life total to exactly 13. The bad news is that Triskaidekaphobia is pretty easy for opponents to play around, since popular lands like fetch lands and shock lands and pain lands let players lose life at instant speed, which can make it pretty difficult to keep your opponent at exactly 13 life until your upkeep. Oh yeah, and if you aren't careful, you might accidentally kill yourself with Triskaidekaphobia if you find yourself at 13 life since the card is symmetrical. Number 12, Faithbound Judge. The biggest problem with making someone lose a game with Faithbound Judge is that it just takes a lot of time and your opponents will definitely see it coming, which means they're gonna try their best to stop it. To make someone lose with Faithbound Judge, you need to get it in your graveyard and then cast the backside curse for seven mana and then wait three turns for it to get counters on your upkeep, at which point the curse player will lose the game. While you can speed up Sinner's Judgment a bit with the help of Proliferate, in reality it really only saves one turn because you need to wait a turn to get the first judgment counter and then you can proliferate up to two counters and then you need to wait one more turn till your next upkeep to get the last counter because the lose the game ability will only trigger on your upkeep no matter how many counters it has on it. The slowness of Faithbound Judge is pretty problematic. Opponents can see their impending death and they'll either try to kill you or just remove the curse, which keeps Faithbound Judge in the bottom half of our rankings. Number 11. Ezio Adotre de Frenese. This ranking is pretty speculative since this card hasn't even released yet. It's coming out in a few months in the Assassin's Creed set, making it one of the only cards on our list that I haven't personally used to kill an opponent. But my guess is it's going to be hard, but not impossible to win the game with Ezio. To win with the two drop, we need to get in combat damage, pay a mana of each color, and have our opponent be at 10 or less life. The life total restriction isn't that big of a deal as the game goes along our opponents will naturally lose life so in the late game they'll probably end up at 10 or less anyway and this is doubly true in formats with fetch lands and shock lands that help lower players life total the same is true of having all five colors of mana with fetch lands and triumphs and shock lands it's actually super easy to build a mana base that can pay wooberg but getting in an attack with a 3-2 in the late game even one with menace seems a bit tricky especially since opponents will know they'll die from a single attack so they're gonna go all in to stop it from happening. Number 10, Strixhaven Stadium. At a glance, it looks fairly easy to kill an opponent with a three mana mana rock. All you need to do is hit your opponent with 10 creatures without taking any combat damage from your opponent's stuff. But in practice, it's a lot harder than it looks. In 60 card formats, Strixhaven Stadium is typically a win more card. If you manage to hit your opponent with 10 creatures, your opponent's probably just gonna die to damage naturally without you needing Strixhaven Stadium. Meanwhile, in Commander, the issue with Stadium 
medium is that as soon as it hits the battlefield and gets a couple of counters your opponents recoil in terror and it'll team up to take you out because they're worried that you'll randomly make a bunch of tokens at instant speed and make them lose the game which means a lot of times Strixhaven Stadium kills you rather than killing your opponents if you do decide to take the Strixhaven Stadium challenge the best bet is to slow roll it don't run it out on turn three like a mana rock but instead wait until you get a big lethal board of creatures and then you put it on the battlefield and kill someone with, with one attack just like you would with a Beastmaster Ascension or Coat of Arms. Number 9, Vraska Golgari Queen. The final Vraska on our list, Golgari Queen is strange. It's a very playable card, arguably a staple back in Guilds of Ravnica standard, and good enough to occasionally show up in Pioneer and Modern, although using Vraska to make someone lose the game is pretty rare. Most often it just generates card advantage in sack decks and abrupt decays away opponents' permanents. Like the other Vraskas we've discussed, it's the ultimate that lets Vraska and your opponent, giving you an emblem that essentially gives all your creatures death touch, but for players with a single attack making an opponent lose the game. Compared to Veraska Unseen, there are pluses and minuses to Veraska Golgari Queen's ultimate. While it doesn't provide creatures like Veraska Unseen, if you already have a board of creatures, Golgari Queen's ability is much stronger since you can ultimate pre-combat main phase and immediately attack to make your opponent lose. This combined with the fact that Veraska Golgari Queen is the more playable card in general, which means you're more likely to actually see its lose the game effect happen compared to the less playable Veraskas, makes Veraska Golgari Queen the highest ranked Veraska on our list, although overall it still ends up in the middle of the pack. Number 8. Frodo Sauron's Bane. Being tempted by the ring four times is super easy, even discounting the fact that Frodo can help up the temptation count. On the other hand, to actually win the game with Frodo, we need to invest six total mana to play it and then level it up, and then getting combat damage with a 2-3, although a leveled up ring does help by offering some evasion. While this can be a challenge, especially since Frodo dies to pretty much any removal spell, and once you start to level it up, you can bet your opponent is going to do their best to kill it. It tends to be one of those heartbreaking cards where you get it fully leveled up and go for that attack and then your opponent shows the fatal push or lightning bolt. Number 7, Atrata the Silencer. To win the game with Atrata, we need to deal combat damage with it three times, which will exile three of our opponent's creatures and make them lose the game. Even better, Atrata is unblockable, so this should be pretty easy, right? Well, not exactly. The challenge of Atrata, discounting the fact that if our opponent doesn't play any creatures, it doesn't really do anything at all, is that when we deal combat damage, it shuffles itself into our library, an ability that requires some tricky deck building to work around, like using ninjutsu or bounce effects or even better blink effects to keep Atrata on the battlefield and prevent it from shuffling back into our library every time it deals combat damage, because shuffling it back in and drawing it three times just isn't a realistic plan. In the right deck, the Atrata kill is certainly achievable, but building the right deck around Atrata can be a challenge. Number 6. Angel of Destiny to make your opponent lose the game with Angel of Destiny, you need to get the 5 drop on the battlefield, attack with it, and have at least 15 more life than your starting life total, which means 35 life in a 1v1 game and 55 in commander. You might think that the life total part of Angel is the hard part, but in reality, thanks to its ability, gaining both players life whenever your creatures deal combat damage to a player, and the fact that if you're playing Angel of Destiny, you're likely a life game theme deck anyway, it's really not. In the right deck, gaining 15 life from your starting point is fairly easy. The challenge with Angel of Destiny is you need to play the 5 dot flyer, wait until it loses summoning sickness, and then attack with it and have it survive until your end step. This is doable, especially if you can give Angel of Destiny haste, but I wouldn't exactly call it easy, bringing Angel of Destiny in near the middle of our list. Number 5. Fage the Untouchable. Perhaps the most iconic lose the game card in Magic, especially today since being a legendary creature means you can play Phage as your commander, although actually getting out on the battlefield from the command zone requires some tricks. Making an opponent lose the game with Phage is actually super easy if you build around it. The idea of Phage is that it kills an opponent with just a single attack, which is an incredibly powerful ability, but it also comes with a huge drawback. If you don't 
outcast the quad black seven drop from your hand, you lose the game when it enters the battlefield. Thankfully, there are some ways around this, which can lead to some incredibly fast phage kills. With something like Torpor Orb or Doorkeeper Thrall or Stifle to avoid phages enters the battlefield trigger, there are many ways to cheat phage into play. For example, if you can avoid losing the game to phage's ETB, you can reanimate it with haste with a Goryeo's Vengeance for just two mana, hit your opponent and make them die. If you want to play phage on hard mode, you can also use something like Endless Whispers to make your opponent put phage into play under their control without casting it from their hand, which turns phages lose the game enters the battlefield drawback into an upside. We've even used phage to kill someone with Dermo Taxi, which can become a copy of the legend once it's on the battlefield to avoid phages ETB. All in all, phage is one of the easier ways to make an opponent lose the game in magic, but it still does require a lot of deck building work to pull off. You can't really just jam phage in a random deck and get value from it. It's simply too slow, which keeps phage from breaking into the very top tier of our list, although it still is solidly in the top five. I have no, I have one card in hand. I'm gonna tap this Dark Slick Shore. I'm going to cast in tune. <laughs> this can't be good. No. no okay. Baby, we got a stew going. Maybe I'm gonna pitch Phage. Yeah, I think, think that's a phage stash. kill. <laughs> uh, then I'm going to go to combat. This is a nice Phage, and I'm attacking you, Seth. Number four. Vorpal Sword. Sure, Vorpal Sword costs a lot of mana. One to a cast, two to equip, and then a massive eight to make your opponent lose the game after the equipped creature deals combat damage. But really, equipment are pretty easy to tutor up, and a single swing with an evasive creature can end your opponent no matter their life total, making it one of the easiest lose the game cards to actually achieve, which brings it in at number four on our list. Number three, Mirrored and Besieged. Making your opponent lose the game when Mirrored and Besieged is actually super easy. All you need to do is get 15 artifacts in your graveyard, which means that all you really need to do is aggressively self mill or loot or play a bunch of cheap cantripping artifacts that sacrifice themselves to stock your graveyard and set up the kill. Even better, Mirrored and Besieged triggers on your end step. If you look at many of our alt win con cards, they tend to trigger on your upkeep, which is a huge downside. It means your opponent gets an entire turn to react and stop the kill, but since Mirrored and Besiege triggers on your end step, you can just stock your graveyard, slam the Mirrored and Besiege, go to your end step, and immediately make your opponent lose the game, which puts it in at number three on our list. Number two, Nicole Bolas Dragon God. Nicole Bolas is fairly unique among the lose the game cards. If you look back on our list, most of the cards are pretty underpowered because they have this potential upside of immediately making your opponent lose the game. Nicole Bolas Dragon God, on the other hand, is a strong if somewhat expensive planeswalker that was played fairly in standard during its era and still occasionally shows up in formats like Pioneer today, but it can also make each opponent who doesn't control a legend, lose a game with its ultimate. Basically, Nicole Bolas Dragon God is like some of the Veraska Planeswalkers lower on our list, but it's way better since Veraska requires some extra steps like having a creature deal combat damage to actually make someone lose the game, while Nicole Bolas does it right away, assuming you can keep legends off your opponent's side of the battlefield. There are a couple of different popular plans to make someone lose with Nicole Bolas. The first and most common is to simply play the Planeswalker in a removal and counterspell heavy control deck. Use it as a card advantage engine thanks to its plus one, and eventually when the situation is right, use the ultimate to kill your opponent. The other typically involves playing Nicole Bolas like a combo piece with the Elder spell, with the idea being to flood the board with cheap planeswalkers, wait until your opponent is legendless, and then stick Nicole Bolas and immediately use the Elder spell to jump its loyalty high enough to ultimate the planeswalker and make your opponent lose. The combination of being a strong strong card advantage in removal generating planeswalker when it's not making your opponents lose the game, but also having an attainable ultimate, especially in a control deck, that can make one or more opponents lose the game immediately, brings Nikki B in at number two on our list. Number one, Door to Nothingness. If I was making this list a few years ago, Door to Nothingness would be much lower. It costs 15 total mana, including 
double Wooberg and waiting a turn to untap the artifact to actually make your opponent lose the game, which is a pretty huge ask. But then Wizards printed the perfect card to make Door to Nothingness work in Timeless Lotus. We've actually seen Door to Nothingness become semi-competitive in modern as a result of the Mana Rock, with the idea being to use Amulet of Vigor to untap Door to Nothingness and also Timeless Lotus to turbo out the double Wooberg activation, which in the right deck with enough ramp cards can let you win with Door to Nothingness super early in the game. While Door to Nothingness combo certainly isn't a top tier modern deck or even close, it has been good enough to win a lot of games and has even seen some tournament success on Magic Online, which is more than any of the other loose game cards on our list can boast, which puts the artifact at number one on our list. Anyway, that's my ranking of all the lose the game cards in Magic. Which one's your favorite? What did I get right? What did I get wrong? Let me know in the comments. And if you're looking for even more Magic, make sure to check out the video where I ranked all the win the game cards in Magic, or maybe the one where I explain the MTG Iceberg.